Hello, uh, today's video will be going over how to uh, solder and set up your micro switches for your limits for your X and Y axis on the Voron V2. However, uh, the principles in this video will also uh, apply to the Voron V1 and really any other 3D printer that uses micro switches. Looking at the limit switch, in this case a KW10, you'll see three prongs. In our case, we will only be using the outer two. You will see labeling C for common, N for normally open, and NC for normally closed. We will be using the normally closed prongs along with the common prong uh, for wiring up our limit. The difference between normally open and normally closed. Uh, normally open assumes that the circuit is not complete and when the switch is activated, that completes the circuit, sending the signal to the controller, letting it know that the limit has been tripped. With normally closed, the circuit is completed and tripping the limit switch breaks the circuit, letting the firmware know that the limit has been tripped. With your firmware, you can configure it to work with either normally open or normally closed. However, the default firmware for Vorons is set up for a normally closed limit switch and myself and many others believe it is a safer way of doing limit switches. The reason for this is with a normally closed circuit if you go to home your machine and a wire is broken or a crimp has failed or the solder joint has failed the printer will automatically trip the limit and you'll see right away it'll go to home and it'll just and it'll, it'll automatically stop essentially. Uh, this prevents it from essentially crashing. So, wire your limits in a normally closed state. For assembling your X and Y limit switches, it is a unit, so you can pre-assemble this and then install it in your printer. What you will need is two KW10 micro switches, the printed housing. You will need four lengths of wire. Uh, this is some example wire I have just on my desk here, but we do recommend going with the silicone wire that is included uh, below with the bill of materials and all the other recommended items for building your Voron. You will need a soldering iron, some solder. Uh, flux is handy, even though uh, this is leaded solder with a rosin core. The flux makes it a little bit easier and uh, some shrink wrapping just for cable management. You also need any hardware that you need for assembling these as well. So the first thing we're gonna do is trim off the casing of the wire and tin the wire itself. Just apply a little bit of flux. Uh, this is, you know, the liquid stuff is better, but this came with a kit I bought years ago and it's good enough for this kind of use. Uh, most cheap soldering iron kits come with generic flux such as this. You just need a little bit. This will just help the solder wick into the wire itself. Simply apply a little bit. Wipe your hands off. Now the soldering iron I use is a TS100. Uh, however, really any solder iron, soldering iron works for us here. So soldering is one of those things where if we had three hands, life would be a lot easier. Uh, if you have a third hand uh, unit, something to hold everything, it does make it a little bit easier. However, I'm trying to keep this as simple as possible because not everyone has all the equipment. So to start off, you're gonna wanna tin your wires. And this means putting just a little bit of solder on the ends of each wire. So with our wires tinned, we are going to want to apply solder as well to the two outer prongs of our limit switches. When you solder a um, pin such as this, you want to heat up the pin and put the solder to the pin. Do not put it to the iron, put it to the pin itself. Now for this one, it is a little bit trickier. 
on this one we can simply have the wires coming straight off however with this one we do have to clear this little cutout here because a screw has to come through and we do have to on this far one here ensure that the wires remains within the housing now you can do these with the limit switch of course not in the housing however i do find it's a little bit easier uh, because this gives you something bigger to hold on to Okay, and now we need to attach our wires to the prongs. So for this, you're going to take your wire, line it up with the prong, and you're going to press it down onto the prong with your uh, soldering iron. I'm just clean it up quick. Now remove the heat. Hold it still and it will stay attached. There we go, and that is the one. Now again for the second one here, remember we do have to clear that hole. So simply come at it from the side. done and finally the last one and that is it as simple as that now what you can do at this point is trim the ends of the wires And get yourself a multimeter. With your multimeter, you're going to do a continuity test. Okay. So, if your multimeter has prongs, it makes it a little bit easier. You're going to connect both to the wires. Okay. So we see that the circuit is closed, and then when you activate it, you will see that the circuit opens. So we know that this one is wired up correctly. I recommend checking both of them before you go any further uh, because the last thing you want to do is get everything cleaned up and realize that something is not correct. Now at this point, you're actually going to want to uh, have these not in the housing at all. And the reason for that is we are going to shrink wrap these connections for a little bit of extra strength and to prevent shorting. Be careful when shrink wrapping, you do not want to overheat. Uh, this can melt the plastic or in worst case scenario actually melt the solder if you have a big enough heat gun. And then you're going to reinstall your switches back into the housing. And what you can also do at this point is actually bundle the whole thing together with another piece of shrink wrap. This just provides a little bit of extra strength and keeps everything neat. Cable management is key. It'll make any printer look good, or at least some of them look good. Once you have the unit assembled, you attach it to the bottom of your XY joint. Again, it is the XY joint on the right side if you are facing towards the front of your printer. Now this would screw on and attach to the carriage on the rail. Uh, in this case, it's just a mock-up. Now at this point, what you will do is take your wire and kind of eyeball roughly how long you will need. Because at this point, you are going to trim this and put a connector here so this way you can wire this into the rest of your wire loom 
going back to the controller board. You want a connector here and you don't want the wires going all the way back for any reason. If you ever need to take this apart for maintenance, this way you can simply disconnect the connector, unscrew these two, and the whole assembly comes out and you don't need to worry about breaking anything or losing wires or forgetting which one goes where. It stays as a unit. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any questions, again, feel free to ask them below or ask in the Voron Discord. Links for all recommended items for your Voron build will be below, as well as links to the Voron Discord and community. Thank you, and have a good day.